Welcome back to the channel. Today we have a very interesting product that we'd like to introduce to our readers. That is the D-Link 5GB7002 Wi-Fi 7 router. So this is a Wi-Fi 7 router. It's actually a router that is used with your SIM card, whether it's a 4G or a 5G SIM card, where you can actually share out the data and actually use it for your household or for your small office. Before we unpack this, let's take a look at the specs of this particular unit. So over here, there's a basic summary of what you can do. For example, you can actually deliver up to 7 gig down and 2.5 gig up and support the SA and NSA mode. There are two 2.5 gig Ethernet ports behind which you can use it to hook up to your PC or your switches. And it's claimed to support up to 512 users and there's a nano SIM slot where you can actually uh, insert your SIM and it's all uh, auto-configurable. Now from here, we can see the actual feature set. So it's the next generation 5G connectivity is up to 7 gig. So you have the built-in Wi-Fi 7, supports the 5G NSA and SA modes. And it supports the LTA coverage also. So these are the supported uh, frequencies. So if you are in a country where it supports these frequencies, you can actually use it. So your N1, N3, N7, N8, so on and so forth, N78. So for 4G, you can have your B1, B3, B8, B28, B40, B41. It also support. It also supports 3G. If let's say you are, there's still 3G frequencies in your country, right? So. The, this is the uh, diagram which shows the position of the WAN and LAN port, the power connector. And there is also a phone jack which you can hook it up to your standard desktop phone. This is the QR code for you to download the app to configure your router. Okay, now let's unbox the package. So this is the router and it's actually surprisingly small. I was expecting it to be bigger in size. So this is the actual router. Pretty neat, isn't it? This is the WS button for the phone jack, the LAN and WAN port, the shed, and there's also a LAN port. And there's the top. And these are all the indicator lights in the front. And there's a power switch over here. And at the, at the bottom, you can actually see the SIM slot. Okay, so you need to insert your nano SIM into this slot. Inside the package, there's also a quick installation guide, which you can actually uh, refer to. Okay, so this is a 5G CPE, and then there's a power cord, and there's also indication of all the buttons where you can do the reset, the SIM card slot, the Type C interface for power. Power indicator light, what do they mean but when it flashes or whether it's solid green or in blue. Right? So this particular simple uh, guide shows you how you can actually install the SIM card. So if you connect it to your desktop machine, your desktop PC, then you can actually access the admin page from uh, HTTPS 192.168.0.1 Enter admin and then refer the password to the device table uh, at the bottom of the router 
and you can use the uh, web-based interface to actually configure the settings including the password and so on and so forth okay that's basically the installation guide and over here we have the, the, the three pin power adapter and there's the ethernet cable provided And there is this RJ11 cable for your phone, for your desk phone. Okay, what I'm going to do right now is to actually insert the SIM card into the router. So this is my Nano SIM over here. You see, it's very tiny. You notice that there is an edge over here on the left on the top left corner there is an edge okay so what you need to do is that you follow the direction as indicated on the unit itself so you just follow the direction that is indicated on the router and then insert it in. And you hear a click sound. So you can push it again to eject it. Now let's get the adapter and plug in the power supply over here. We're going to power it on. And after a while you can see the Wi-Fi logo turn on and we what we have inserted is a 4G SIM card so it's the 4G indicator is turned on in this segment we will access the dealing router web administration page through https colon slash slash 192.168.0.1 now key in admin and also the administration password if it's the first time you're entering the admin password the password can be found under the router if you have set up the router properly you can see from this page that there is the 4G or 5G connection to the router and also the Wi-Fi name over here it will also show you the WAN uptime system uptime and the WAN IP address at the top right of the manual bar, there is a globe icon. If you click on this, you will be able to see the network information. That will include the operator name, the network type, the MCC code, the radio mode, the bands they are connected to. In this tab, you set the internet connection type. So there are a few options you can choose. That includes the auto, DHCP, static IP, PPPoE and LAN only. In this third tab, you set the Wi-Fi basic settings. You can enable the dual band AI connect and also you can set the name of the access point, the security type and also the password. You can choose to disable the dual band AI connect so that you can set different passwords for 2.4 gig and 5 gig band. Over here, you can set the access control by using MAC filtering to disable access to the network. With WPS, your wireless client can automatically synchronize the settings and connect to the access point in a minute without any hassle. Next, we have the scheduler. With the scheduler, you can actually turn on and off the Wi-Fi at a particular time of the day. Over here, you can actually enable the guest mode so that your guests can actually connect to a separate network. Over here, you can enable the mobile data and also the network type, be it 3G, 4G, 5G auto select, or 4G only, or 5G only. For most SIM cards, the APN will be automatically set. If it's not set correctly, you can actually add a new APN over here. Also remember to turn on the VLTE so that you can receive voice calls. Next, we have the pin manage. 
followed by the SMS for texting, inbox and outbox. So basically you can actually receive SMS and also you can use it to send out SMS from here. Over here you can use the USSD code to actually send out queries to your SIM card to check balances. Under the clients tab, you actually show all the clients that are connected to this router including the IP address and also the MAC address and you can also block it if you want. Uh, under the more tab, it actually shows you the device model name, the serial number, the IME, software and hardware version, etc. On the left hand side, there's also a tab to check for new firmware and also a parental control option. Under the network tab, you can actually set a DHCP server, your DDNS, port forwarding, DMZ, IPv6, QoS and also VPN. Under the system tab, you can actually change the current password. Also set the network time based on your time zone. You can either do a backup or reset and also enable the system locks. Under the firewall, you can actually do MAC filtering or IP filtering. Under the, develop under the developers tab, there is the bands lock. With the bands lock, you can actually lock to a certain band which provide you with the better speed in your region. Last but not least is the diagnostics. Over here you can do the ping, a trace route or NS lookup. Now let's take a look at speed tests. What they have is that we inserted the M1 SIM card which runs the 5G SA network onto our D-Link router and we are having a pretty good speed at around 700 megabits per second and the latency is around 15 milliseconds which is pretty good as for the uplink speed is around 30 okay we are reaching 41 around 40 megabits per second which is reasonable for a 5G connection. Now let's change the server and do the test again. Now we are using, we are testing against the Pacific Internet server. And the ping time is 14 milliseconds and the speed is going up, reaching almost 580. Okay, we just break 600. So the uplink is now at around 17, 18, 19, 20. It's going up. Finally, we get a score of 35 milli megabits per second. Now let's use another tool which is called NPerf, which also you can use it to do a speed test. So in this case, we use the auto, we use the auto detected server. And it scores around 600 megabits per second for the downlink. As for the uplink is around 40 megabits per second. So we have the score of 632.2 versus 41.3 for the uplink. And the latency is around 16 milliseconds, which is very impressive for a 5G connection. Now we change to another server and then we try it again. This time using the Gestel server. Okay, the speed is going up.
so we are gaining around 600 odd probably around 610 620 so okay the final result is 636 megabits per second and the uplink is around 38 39 so we have around 40 40.13 megabits per second and latency is at 15 milliseconds In conclusion, the D-Link B7002 4G 5G router has really impressed me with its speed and coverage. I have successfully replaced my home fiber broadband with a more affordable and flexible SIM-based mobile connection. It even lets me make voice calls through a desk phone connected to the RG11 port. A key feature that boosted the speeds is its support for carrier aggregation and also 5G, which enhances performance and ensures a smoother experience. To get the best out of this router, it's important to pair it with a 4G or 5G SIM card that offers plenty of data. Additionally, make sure your area has good coverage and speed to fully maximize its potential. This router is an ideal choice for home or small office use, especially in regions where fiber broadband is expensive or not readily available. Overall, it's a reliable, cost-effective solution that delivers excellent performance. This concludes our review of the D-Link BE7002 4G 5G router. I've posted the product links in the description box below, so you can actually check out the description and pricing over there. So if you like our review, do remember to subscribe to our channel and also remember to share it out to your friends. So thanks again for watching and see you in the next one.